Hello and welcome back to Church Online. It's nice to be back again. I had taken some time away from Church Online to focus in on the project management side of this building. Just for the past few months, as we are now tantalizingly close to completion. If you've been following the Friday updates over on our church Facebook page, you'll see just how far we've came over the last few months. And I know that some of you have even called down when you've saw and you've known that we're going to be here and you've had a wee sneaky peek. And I think I speak for everyone who's had a wee sneaky peek when I say, wow, to God be the glory. See, there's a very small team here constantly beavering away over various finishing touches. And when you look at the people that that team has been placed in contact with, the workload that's been carried out by so little, you can only give credit where credit's due. And that's to God himself. You see, where the world or possibly yourself might look at that same little team Look at the progress and the time taken over the many years of this project. God takes a small church like ours, takes a building project like ours, but when God's timing is right, when God anoints that little church, that little lengthy process, it's like water to a freshly potted plant. And you see, for me, that's how I have saw this recent stage. It's been like a gardener has repotted a plant, different soil, different surroundings, bigger space to grow, and that plant has got new life and blossoms. We have had our normal world come to a complete stop. Our normal surroundings change. Our way of life changed. And in the middle of that, the word from Jesus was completion. We can look back over the past few months and it's been like fresh water has been pouring down on us. And we and you have watched this building project take off with new life and the project has blossomed. Another thought takes me back to a prophecy our church was given some time ago. And the changes that would come to our church and this place in the form of tsunamis. Now, perhaps we'll hear more about that as the weeks go on and the countdown to the doors opening starts for Sunday services. And let me tell you, it's really close. Like I said, we are tantalizingly close and only to God be the glory. Now, we've certainly felt that anointing down here as we've continued to work through the lockdowns and working and planning. Now, it's not to say God's anointing hasn't been present over the last lot of years. But if you remember the word for this year, for 2021, the season or the year of seasons and the continuation, but the ending of a season of patience and the beginning of a season of greatness. God can quickly turn things around. It's ultimately he is in control. And when he anoints something, that something or someone is powerful. Their situation changes. They are changed through the power given from God. And that's what I want to share with you about today. The power of God when he anoints. When God takes little old you, anoints you, and gives you the power to do things you thought or told yourself you couldn't do. Let's take Samson, for example. Samson was blessed with physical power and strength. Now, I often wonder what Samson would you know, have really looked like, as I don't think the pictures in my old children's Bible are accurate. And I suppose the same could be said for Jesus himself. What do they really look like? But to me, Samson looked like a bodybuilder. Now, I suppose back then he might have just been a guy like everyone else who ate the right food and that fueled his strength and his muscle gain. Today, social media is full of pictures of both men and women who are chasing their perfect body, eating only certain foods and have a strict workout schedule. Now, I think Samson would have been similar in physique. He worked hard, big muscles and raw strength. But just like today, I don't think he was alone or anything special. I think Samson would have looked like any other Israelite. So let's have a look at Judges 14 verse 6 and see what his secret actually was. 
the Spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon him, so that he tore the lion apart with his bare hands, just as he might have torn apart a young goat. Now, tearing apart a young goat seems a little brutal for this day and age, where an Israelite might have been able to tear a young goat apart. There's, uh, there's Samson, totally in the same stride, able to tear apart a lion. So looking in on that, what sets Samson apart from all the others is that every time the Spirit of the Lord came over him, he was able to do these great things and he acted from that source of power and that's what sets him apart. Another great example which spoke volumes to me when I was younger was Moses when he saw the burning bush and he heard from God. God said to him in Exodus chapter 3, I have saw and I've heard the cry of the people of Israel and I have saw the oppression. I will send you to Pharaoh that you may bring my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. Now, Moses then said, God, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the children of Israel out of Egypt? And God said, don't worry, I will be with you. And again, later on in chapter 4, Moses said, they're not going to believe me or listen to my voice. What they'll say is, the Lord didn't appear to you. So the Lord, first of all, had to get Moses to believe in himself. And he does this by showing him two signs that he may first believe and then he told him to show those signs so that they may believe that the Lord, the God of their fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob has in fact appeared to you. And if they still don't believe, God said, go take some water from the Nile and pour it out in front of them. And as you do, it will turn to blood. Now it sounds awful, but Moses had to prove God was real. So God in turn gave him supernatural abilities to set him apart, even from the local magicians. Moses then was like, Lord, please, I don't talk well. I've never been good with words, neither before or after you have spoken to me. I stutter, I stammer. God said, Moses, who do you think made the mouth? Who do you think makes some mute, some deaf, some sighted, some blind? Isn't it I, God? So away you go. I'll be there with you. I'll be right there with your mouth. And I'll teach you what to say. And so then we read eight times. Moses goes to Pharaoh with a demand. Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, let my people go. And of course, we all know the rest. Now what excites me is the power given when God gets involved. Supernatural power, supernatural abilities. And that's just two examples of ordinary people just like you and I. And the Bible is full of others. When the world sees ordinary people who don't look like they can achieve much, and then that then rubs off onto that person who thinks, I can't, I've got nothing to give, I am nothing because they say, I am nothing. When they could one day open their mouth and then that's when we realize that we're in the presence of a great man or a great woman of God. It was the same with Samson's strength. Ordinary until God takes the ordinary and turns it into extraordinary. Moses, just an orphan who became more powerful than the Pharaoh. The Bible, like I said, is full of real examples of real people who God used, anointed, empowered, and changed the world in his name. In my last message, I was sharing with you about whether we'd like to admit it or not, we've all changed over the past 15 months. And about not judging people over their actions. Don't get sucked in. Don't get lured into shaming people you once called friend because they had a different opinion than you did. Now I've often spoken, and I've even spoken about this particular thing before, but how in a room full of people, you will have different opinions on things. But should having a different opinion mean you shouldn't be friends with that person? 
The answer is a resounding no. You should not let opinions break up friendships. It's clear that without God's strength, we are too powerless against such attacks. And that is exactly what they are. Attacks from the enemy to destroy what God has created. A church family, relationships. Samson had the same worldly power as anyone else until he received strength from God. Moses, like I said, he had a fortunate escape when he was a baby, an orphan who ended up living in the palace until he realized who he was and with God-given power, Moses became more powerful than Pharaoh and walked out of Egypt with thousands of Israelites. So let me finish with this challenge of a question for you. What are you doing for God right now? Is there something he's asked you to do that you've been putting off? Perhaps you think you can't. So if no one else has said to you, let me be the first to say, yes, you can. In fact, scripture even tells us that not only can I do all things through Christ who strengthens me, but that I am more than a conqueror through the love of Jesus Christ. God can take you where you are right now and make you into the person you were born to be and give you the power to do things you thought or were told you couldn't. Let's pray. Jesus, thank you for loving us. Thank you for giving us strength when we ask for it. Thank you for never giving up on us. And thank you for giving us purpose and making us into the people and person we were born to be. To God be the glory. Amen. You are taking my-